Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm here to do my last book haul of the year. Um, I have been sleeping so badly recently and I've just filmed my two Christmas videos, my top Christmas books and my top Christmas films and I think I've just waffled the whole way through. Um, so I'm sorry if this video is very much the same and just absolute rubbish. Um, I'm so tired, I've got a headache and I just feel like I'm in a trance at the moment. So let's try and do this and let's see how it goes. So I'm gonna talk you through all of the books I've got are required since I last spoke to you. Um, I have had a huge, huge clear out of old books, um, mainly because I kind of just want to start the new year afresh. Um, I've got a lot of kind of goals for the new year and I kind of felt very overwhelmed by how many books I had and how kind of un untidy my room was because I just had stacks of books everywhere. So I was very ruthless um, and I went through and I got rid of books that I had never read and probably wouldn't read, um, books that I'd read once and probably would never read again and, um, and I really kind of kept the books that either mean something to me or books that I've recently acquired that I definitely want to read or again books that I've kind of had for a long time but definitely want to get around to reading. Um, so I've managed to clear out a lot of books. Um, so I'm feeling a little bit more kind of on top of my TBR pile which is nice. Um, but there are still some publishers that are sending me books which is so lovely of them um, so they're kind of adding back to my shelves again my shelves kind of don't seem to be reducing that much um, but I'm going to talk you through the, the books that I've got I don't think I'm probably going to end up receiving any more books I don't think um, this year there's not any that I've been asked about anyway so the books that do arrive will probably be unsolicited um, Two of the books I've been sent were sent to me from the authors themselves. They wanted to send me their books, so I was very more, I was more than happy to receive them. Um, one of them was gifted to me by a friend for Christmas, which was an early Christmas present, and then the others were sent to me by the publishers. So I'm going to start off with the one that was gifted to me by my lovely friend Jenny, um, and it is A Boy Called Christmas by Matt Haig. I absolutely adore Matt Haig, and as soon as I saw this book had come out, I really, really wanted to read it, and my lovely friend Jenny um, bought this for me as an early Christmas present, and she is is a legend because she actually got it signed for me oh I don't know if you can see that um, she is amazing with things like this she surprised me earlier on this year with a signed book by David Leverton so to have a signed Matt Haig book has just made my year um, and I've actually already read this and it is just so brilliant it's um, an, anima an animated <laughs> a um, illustrated book all about um, the boy who becomes Father Christmas and I'm just gonna try and find my favorite illustration um, there is a really good picture somewhere and sort of store, I can't find it when I want to. Um, I think it's illustrated by someone called Chris Mould, and I've never heard of him before, and I've never seen his illustrations, but they're very funny, um, and I really actually really liked them in this book. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there's kind of like some of them like double page spreads, and they're just really, really gorgeous, very detailed images. So I really love this book, and to be honest, it's probably the kind of book that I'm probably going to end up reading again this year, um, and probably for many years to come um, it's going to be I think a new Christmas classic so definitely read this if you haven't um, and also this is a fantastic present for children because it is aimed at kind of a middle grade reader so kind of you know 7 to 12 I suppose um, uh, and yeah it's just really lovely and the end papers are gorgeous as well I don't know if you can see those and the book itself is red so all very festive and all very lovely so thank you very much to Jenny for that one I will treasure this forever uh, the next book that I was sent is from a, an author who sent me a copy of their book and it, they sent me a little letter as well and it is called Out of Darkness by Katie Hogan. Um, I don't know too much about this book, I only really heard of it as one of uh, the people on Twitter was doing a giveaway for it and I entered the giveaway but then the author contacted me and said oh you know I'm happy to send you a copy of the book. Um, and it, the blurb says, following the sudden death of her beloved mother, Jessica Gibson's world falls apart, but after meeting a man who seems heaven sent, she starts to feel she has something to live for again, and so begins an emotional journey which leads Jessica to believe the unbelievable thanks to a series of intriguing messages from beyond the grave. Out of the Darkness is a tale of friendship and redemption, of love and loss and life after death. So I really like the sound of that, and the blogger who was talking about it has been raving about it for ages, so I'm kind of really excited to read this. Um, unfortunately at the moment my TBR pile is huge with kind of books that I've had there for ages, so I'm hopefully going to get around to this in the new year, but I will definitely be doing a review of this. Um, so let me know if you've read this actually, let me know if it's something that sounds intriguing to you. Um, I'm very intrigued and I really like the cover as well so thank you to Katie for sending me that I will be very excited to read that one and then the other one that was sent to me by the author is called Daydream Believer by Lizzie Fake I think that's how you pronounce your surname sorry if it's not 
Um, and again, Lizzie contacted me via Twitter um, and she said, I've got a book, I really want to send you a copy, is that okay? And I said, yeah, sure, why not? So it arrived this morning um, and this tells the story of Sarah Collins, whose world is about to be changed forever by her imaginary boyfriend. Her dream world collides with reality when she invents Steve, the rock musician, in the hope of adding some much needed glamour to her life while gaining a little respect from her workmates. As the lie spirals out of control, she finds herself in the Costa Blanca. Could her chaotic holiday actually make some of her daydreams come true? So I quite like the sound of this one. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of... Uh, I, I feel like it's a bit of like the wrong time of year to be reading this right now. Um, this sounds like a very summery read, so hopefully I'm going to be reading it kind of in the new year as well. I don't think I'll get around to it before Christmas. Um, but I like the sound of it, and I did actually download the sample from Kindle, and I did read the first couple of chapters. And it sounded quite... it was quite good. It was quite funny. Um, Kind of a nice premise, a nice idea, so um, looking forward to actually reading the rest of that. So that is Daydream Believer, and thank you to Lizzie for sending me a copy, very much appreciated. Um, the next book I was sent was an unsolicited copy of a book from Pam McMillan, um, but I'm really, really happy they sent it to me. I wasn't expecting it at all, and it is Underwater, and here we go, uh, Marissa Reichart, I think that's how I'm pronouncing her name. Um, and this is published in 2016, um, in April, so quite a way to go for this one. But it sounds amazing, it sounds just like my kind of book. Um, it's about a girl who uh, can't leave her house because of something that happened in the past. And it's kind of about her learning to overcome her fears and things. Uh, and it's kind of very touching and poignant to me because I, you know, I have anxiety issues and I haven't left the house in a long time. And even though the reason being is very different to the reason in this book. It's kind of very nice to read books about this that could, because a lot of the time it's kind of very under, misunderstood but to have a book that kind of explores those issues is really exciting so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. So thank you so much to my kind of book and Pam McMillan for sending this. I'm really really looking forward to reading that one. Um, so that is Underwater. The next book that I was sent is a book that was sent to me from Myra Inc and this is called Not That Easy by Radhika Sankhani, I think that's your name, sorry if I've got it wrong. Um, and this is a sequel, I believe, or um, a companion novel to her original book, I don't know if you can see it there, called Virgin, which was published last year, I believe, and that's been on my wish list for a long time. I haven't actually read it. Um, and they asked me if I wanted to review it, but I said I don't know if I can because I haven't read the first book. But apparently this works as a standalone and you don't have to read, read the first one. But apparently it follows the same kind of character, or it does follow the same character. Um, and it follows... Um, a story, the story of a girl called Ellie who is determined to live the wild single life her favourite TV show promised her. Even though she has debt, an unpaid magazine internship and three flatmates who left her with a single room to match her single status. That's okay, she doesn't want a boyfriend anyway. She wants several. Even if it does mean her ruthless magazine editor boss exploiting her dating life for column. But as Ellie witnesses the emotional wreckage she's leaving in her wake, she can't help but wonder if her ideal single lifestyle is all it's cracked up to be. So I like the sound of that and I really, really, really love the cover. So I'm looking forward to reading this one um, and I believe this has actually already been published I don't think I got a press release with it um, yeah it published in 2015 so either coming up very soon or already out so thank you to Myra for that one the next book I was sent was a bit of an odd one um, a long long time ago I signed up to a website or a kind of a thing called Real Readers um, and I'd never ever ever got a book from them in the past um, it must have been kind of last year I signed up for it, it was a long time ago anyway, um, and I never got a book from it so when this book arrived I was really confused, I was like I've never heard of Real Readers before, and I was like oh wait, yes I have, that was years ago I signed up to it, um, and basically the idea of Real Readers is that you kind of talk about your taste in reading and your blog and then publishers um, can choose you to choose to send books to you based on your preferences, um, and I double check my preferences and I'm kind of confused because this book doesn't really match my preferences at all so I'm kind of confused why I've been sent it. It doesn't really sound like my kind of read um, but nevertheless I might give it a go because you know stepping out of comfort zones and all that but it's called um, The Last of the Bowmans by J. Paul Henderson um, who wrote The Last Bus to Coffeeville um, and this is kind of it just sounds a bit odd um, after an absence of some seven years, Greg Bowman returns from America to find his father lying in a bamboo coffin, his estranged brother Billy stalking a woman with no feet, and his 79-year-old uncle Frank planning to rob a bank. While renovating the family house, he is unexpectedly visited by the presence of his dead father and charged with the task of fixing the family. 
In the course of his reluctant investigations, Greg discovers not only the secrets behind the strange behaviour of his brother and uncle, but also an unsettling secret of his father's, and one that brings one that brings him face to face with the unintended consequences of his own past. Um, so it sounds okay, I guess. Um, it wouldn't. I don't think if I heard of this, I'd probably pick it up. So I'm kind of a little bit confused why I've had it sent to me, but I'm gonna give it a go. Um, you know, see, read the first couple of chapters and see what I think. But if not, then um, I'm going to have to write to them and say thank you, but no thank you. Um, but it comes out in January 2016, so I'm intrigued. Let me know if you've read Last Buster Coffeeville and let me know if you've heard of this one and let me know what you think. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> so that is The Last of the Bowman. So, but thank you anyway to No Exit Press for that. I'm, I am grateful, even though it's kind of maybe not my cup of tea. Um, the second to last book that I was sent this month is probably the one that I'm secondly most excited about. There's one that I'm going to show you last that's the one I'm most excited about. This is probably the one I'm second most excited about, and it is Try Not to Breathe by Holly Seddon. Now, I heard about this um, on Twitter. Um, the publishers were kind of talking about it and asking if bloggers wanted a copy and I loved the sound of it. Again, it has got the tagline, not since the girl on the train have I been so captivated, so another psychological thriller that's kind of milking the girl on the train status. But anyway, I'm ignoring that um, and it is, a, I think it's a psychological thriller or a thriller anyway. Um, and the blurb says, you won't be able to put it down, just remember to breathe. Alex is sinking, slowly but surely she's cut herself off from everything but her one true love, drink until she's forced to write a piece about a coma ward where she meets Amy. Amy is lost. She, when she was 15, she was attacked and left for dead in a park. Her attacker was never found. Since then, she has drifted in a lonely, timeless place. She's as good as dead, but not even her doctors are sure how much she understands. Alex and Amy grew up in the same suburbs, played the same music, flirted with the same boys, and as Alex begins to investigate the attack, she opens the door to the, sun, to the same danger that Amy has left Amy in a coma. So I love the sound of that. Um, I absolutely adore the cover. Um, this, I believe, is published in 2016, she says. Uh, yes, 2016. So this is one for the new year. Um, definitely going to be reviewing this one. Love the sound of it. Love the cover. Love everything about it. So I shall let you guys know what I think of that one. Thank you to Corvus Books for that one. And then the last book that I literally cannot contain my excitement for is The Night That Changed Everything by Laura Tate and Jimmy Rice. I have got down here somewhere, she says, struggle, look, you can see my pyjamas there, how brilliant. Um, oh no, where is it? It's, oh, here we go. It's on the top shelf. Um, I've got their debut that they wrote last year, The Best Thing That Never Happened To Me. Um, and I just absolutely loved it. And I was so excited when I heard they were writing a second book because... I absolutely love their writing style. Um, Laura and Jimmy write books about um, like relationships, but Jimmy writes the male parts and Laura writes the female parts. Um, it's just absolutely brilliant. So when I heard that they had a second book coming out, I was super, super excited. And I, scre I literally screamed when I opened the envelope um, when I got this one through the post last Friday. And it's really hard because I want to savour this so much, but I'm already like, I've got that far through. Um, I've only got this much left to go which is frustrating because I wanted to make it last forever because I know I've got like another year to wait for the next book um, but I'm absolutely loving this so far um, it's just so brilliant I think it's so witty and the characters are so real and so fantastic and the plot is really good and it's, it's one of those stories that's quite frustrating because you know how each of the characters feels and you just want to bang their heads together and say look listen to each other you both feel the same way um, but it's so good um, I really love the characters that are in it um, the kind of supporting cast of Friends is really, really good as well. Um, it's just really, really lovely. And I just love being back in a book that the, these two have written. Um, you can really tell that they've got a really good friendship because it kind of is reflected in the way that they write together. It's very, it kind of flows very well. And if you, if you hadn't have told me this is written by two people, I would genuinely believe it was written by the same person. Their voices are so similar and so kind of on point. It's just fantastic. So. I highly recommend you put this on your wish list. Um, this is going to be a killer book next year. It's out in April, I believe. Um, no, sorry, March next year. Um, and I just really, really, really recommend you read it. And I just think the cover is absolutely beautiful. Um, this is a proof copy, but I'm pretty sure the final cover is going to look identical. So I just just buy it, just read it, just put it on your wish list. If you haven't already read their first one, then read their first one in preparation for this one. They're not they're not based on the same characters, but I think if you wanna kind of read a good book before this one, then definitely, definitely read this one. Um, yes, just read them because they are amazing. Yes, 
so <laughs> thank you for watching this video i'm sorry it's been kind of crazy um my mind is all over the place i probably should go take a nap now but i will speak to you again in the new year um I don't think I'm going to be making any more videos now before Christmas or the new year. I've got the two going up um, over the course of my Christmas countdown on my blog, the favourite books, favourite Christmas books and then the favourite Christmas films. Um, I maybe might do another haul before the end of the year if I do get anything worth showing off. Um, but if not, I shall see you in the new year. So I hope you all have a very, very lovely Christmas. A very peaceful one, very relaxing one. Eat lots of food, play lots of board games um, and I shall see you in the new year. See you then guys. Bye.